Welcome to Back to Basics. In this video, we're going to revise series and parallel resistors. Remember that the symbol used for a resistor is a rectangle. The symbol R is used for resistance, and resistance is measured in ohms. The symbol used for ohms is the Greek letter omega. The definition for resistance is given as a material's opposition to the flow of electric current. The greater the resistance, the less current will flow through the resistor. To picture this, think of runners running a race. There is a tunnel through which they need to pass in order to get to the finish line. Only a small number of runners can pass through at a time. The smaller the resistance, the more current will pass through the resistor. So, if we have the same number of runners and a bigger entrance to the tunnel, more runners can pass through at the same time to get to the finish line on the other side. This resistance is affected by the type of material. For example, copper offers a lower resistance than nichrome. The length of the conductor, the greater the length, the higher the resistance. The cross-sectional area of the conductor, for example, the larger the diameter, the lower the resistance. And the temperature. At higher temperatures, the charges experience more collisions and therefore a greater resistance. When we think about resistors in series, there's only one path to follow. Thus, we add the resistance values to get the total resistance. This is the equivalent of a single resistor that can replace all other resistors in series. The equation for resistance in series is given by R total equals R1 plus R2. We can think of this as the total resistance in a series circuit as being the sum of the resistances of all the components. The current through a series circuit is the same throughout the series part of the circuit. So the same current will pass through resistor R1 as well as R2 and R3. In series, resistors are considered as potential dividers. Thus, the potential difference across resistor R1 plus the potential difference across resistor R2 plus the potential difference across R3 will give the total potential difference. Let's look at a simple circuit to see how this works. In this case, there's only one path through the resistors. Thus, the three resistors are in series. To calculate the total resistance, we add the resistors. R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Let's now look at resistors in parallel. To calculate the resistance in a parallel circuit, we use the equation 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over each resistor that must be added. Once we have an answer, after working with the fractions, both sides are inverted to give us the value of an equivalent resistor. This is a resistor that can take the place of the other resistors. If we look at the circuit here, we see that there's more than one path to get to the other side of the circuit. The current divides proportionately between the resistors. Where there is less resistance, more current will flow, but the total always adds up. Thus, resistors in parallel are current dividers. And the current through branch I, 1 plus the current through branch I, 2 plus the current through branch I, and 3 will add up to the total current. The potential difference in parallels the same. If a voltmeter was placed across the parallel circuit, 
it will equal to the voltmeter reading across R1, which will equal to the voltmeter reading across R2, and will equal to the voltmeter reading across R3. Let's look at how this works in a circuit. We have three resistors in parallel. The total resistance can be calculated using the equation for parallel resistors. Remember to invert both sides. Let's look at another example. Two light bulbs in a car are identical and have identical resistance, R. Which configuration produces more light, series or parallel? Which way do you think the headlights of the car are wired? The parallel combination has lower resistance than the series combination. Therefore, there will be more current in the parallel configuration. The total power consumed, which is proportional to the light produced, is P equals IV. So, the greater the current in the parallel combination, the more light will be produced. The second question's answer is parallel. If one light goes out, the other light stays lit.